everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now on this planet, there are plenty of fish that are closely related to each other, and in some cases, these species are so closely related that they can even interbreed and create hybrid fish. And in this video, I will be going through some of these species, as I will be going through five hybrid fish from around the world. And to start off, we'll be heading to the freshwaters of North America, as our first parent species is the bluegill. Now the bluegill is one of the most popular and well-known fish in North America, and plays a very important role in the food chain, as bluegills generally reach a maximum size of around 12 inches or 30 centimeters, which puts them in the middle of the food chain, feeding on smaller fish, insects and zooplankton, and falling prey to other fish such as the northern pike, walleye and trout and it also provides food for herons, snapping turtles and otters. But in North America, there are plenty of other species of sunfish that are all closely related to each other, and our second parent fish is in this family, and it is the green sunfish. Now the green sunfish has a slightly shallower body, but reaches around the same length as the bluegill, at around 30 centimeters or 12 inches. And both these sunfish species have quite a wide distribution, and in some cases their natural ranges overlap, meaning that they share the same body of water. And these two species tend to interbreed with each other quite frequently, and the hybrid sunfish that they produce is nicknamed the green gill sunfish. Now this hybrid looks very similar to both parents and you could argue it's almost a 50-50 split. And the green gill sunfish shows a good example of hybrid vigor and this is where a crossbred species shows quality superior to both of its parents. As the green gill sunfish is known to grow faster and larger than its parents. As in captivity they're known to grow up to 32 centimeters or 12 inches long. So this species goes down as a perfect example of a natural hybridization. But our next the next hybrid is a little strange to say the least, as both of its parent species are found in different parts of the world, as the first parent species can be found in North America and it is the very iconic paddlefish. Now paddlefish are often referred to as primitive fish, and that's because they've been on this planet for millions of years and have barely changed in this time. The paddlefish is a highly adapted filter feeder, as it can normally be found swimming through large rivers with its mouth open, filtering out zooplankton and tiny organisms. But unfortunately today, as a result of overfishing pollution and human development, the American paddlefish is critically endangered, and this isn't helped by the fact that their caviar still demands a very high price. And this is made even more worrying by the fact that the only other paddlefish species was declared extinct in 2020. But our second parent species is in a completely different continent, as we'll be travelling over to the freshwaters of Russia, as we have the Russian sturgeon. Now this species is also known as the diamond sturgeon because of the prominent scoots along its body. And again, this is another species that's referred to as primitive. As just like the paddlefish, they have been on this planet for millions of years. Years. But just like the other parent fish, the Russian sturgeon is critically endangered. A sturgeon caviar is the most popular version of caviar, and today still sells for a very high price. And this price tag has led to many people poaching sturgeon and dramatically decreasing their numbers. And as most sturgeon reproduce slowly and grow very slowly, they're very vulnerable to overfishing. But how did both these completely different species end up in the same water system and reproduce? Well, the answer to this question is quite confusing, as it was done completely by accident as Hungarian researchers were trying to induce genogenesis in both the American paddlefish and the Russian sturgeon. And this was an attempt to see if these species could breed in captivity so that they could be released into the wild and help their numbers bounce back. But quite surprisingly, this process produced hundreds of hybrid fish that were given the cute name of sturdle fish. And this was more than surprising, as not only are the two parent species not in the same genus, but they're not even in the same family. And although they are related, their last common ancestor lived 184 million years ago. And and there are some specimens still alive in the research lab today, but there are no further plans to create a new sturdlefish. So I think the sturdlefish has to go down as one of the most surprising hybrids in the world. But for our next parent species, we'll be heading back up to the freshwaters of North America, as our first species is the northern pike. Now the northern pike is one of the most efficient freshwater predators in the world, and is so successful that it spans over multiple continents, being found in parts of Asia, Europe, and North America. The northern pike normally relies on stealth to catch its prey, as it lurks in murky water around vegetation before using its explosive speed to catch smaller fish and even small birds and mammals. And on this diet it can reach a maximum size of around 1.5 meters or 59 inches. But the northern pike is not the only member of its family, as there are many other different members that all look very similar to each other. And one other large member of this family is the muskie. Now unlike the pike, the muskie is only found in North America, but it lives a very similar lifestyle to the northern pike and even gets a little bit larger, as they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 1. 
1.8 meters or 6 feet long. And one of the few ways you can tell this species apart is the markings along its body. And these two pike species often share the same rivers and lakes, meaning that they sometimes interbreed. And the offspring is often referred to as the tiger muskie. The tiger muskie is a very popular sport fish, as they're called the fish of 10,000 casts, due to their rarity and the challenge involved in catching them. And this species is another good example of hybrid vigor, as one study showed that a tiger muskie grew 1.5 times as fast as a regular muskie. These fish are also known to be stronger and less susceptible to disease than the parent fish. But being a hybrid also comes with some negatives, as tiger muskies are often sterile and are unable to reproduce. But the tiger muskie is another good example of a completely natural hybridization. But we move from a completely natural fish to one that's very man-made, as our next species has no natural range and the only specimens in the wild have been released by humans, as we of course have the flower horn cichlid. Flower horns first emerged in the aquarium market in Malaysia in the late 1990s, and they soon became very popular due down to their colour, body shape and behaviour, as the flower horn has a big personality and often reacts whenever the owner is in the room. But the flower horn is also a very controversial fish in the hobby, as it's a very love-hate species, with some people thinking they're very ugly and some people loving them for their colour and personality. Let me know which side you're on in the comments below. And just like the common better, there are now many different types of flower horn with different body shapes and colours, and it is notoriously hard to tell the parent fish of a flower horn, as the breeders normally keep this a secret so that they can produce the prettiest flower horns and in turn make the most money. But unlike many other hybrids, only some of the males are sterile, as some flower horns can actually reproduce, which cuts out the hybridation needed to create flower horns. Some of the species that are thought to have hybridised to create the original flower horns are red devil cichlids, trimax cichlids and blood parrot cichlids. But as I mentioned previously, nobody really knows the true combination and this has to be the most unnatural fish in the aquarium trade today. But for our next hybrid, you can head to pretty much anywhere in the world, as both the parent species are invasive over many continents, as they are the brown trout and the brook trout. Now the brown trout was originally a European species, but has been introduced pretty much globally as both a food fish and a sport fish. And when the brown trout was introduced into America in 1883, it had a chance to mix with our second parent species, the brook trout. Now this species was originally native to the US and Canada, but just like the brown trout has been introduced into many countries around the world. So given these introductions, these two species have had a good chance to get to know each other. Trout species are often very similar in both body shape and diet, and when found in the same lakes and rivers, they often compete with each other for food and space. But some adventurous individuals often interbreed with each other, creating the tiger trout. Now at first, a trout breeding with another species of trout doesn't sound too spectacular. But as some of you may know, the brook trout is an imposter, because it isn't a trout at all and is actually a member of the char family, and many other char are also misnamed as trout. So as its parents are both in different genera, the tiger trout is quite a peculiar fish. And just like the tiger muskie, the species is known to grow faster than its parents, but is also sterile. And because of its amazing markings, this is another very popular fish with anglers, and they've been stocked in many areas including the Great Lakes. And although it isn't completely natural, it is one of the prettiest hybrid fish out there. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any other hybrid species then let me know down in the comments below and I might get around to making a part 2. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.